What's going on guys? So check it out. This is two years with the Raptor 700. Now, if you follow my channel, you know this is probably the only machine I've had this long. <laughs> Be quite honest with you. It's the only, it's probably the longest I've ever had anything in my life. Um, with the exception of maybe one truck back in the early 2000s. But I usually get rid of stuff. I get bored, I get rid of stuff. And the fact that I've had this thing for two years and I have zero intentions on ever getting rid of it speaks volumes to the machine itself. Um, you just can't get bored of this thing. And I don't have a lot of work done to it. So this video is going to be basically my thoughts on it after owning it for two years. Um, it's got about 80 hours on it, I would say. And the mods, I'll, we'll talk about the mods I have to date. Not much has changed since my one-year review. But we'll, we'll just summarize quick the mods to date. And then I'll talk about uh, anything that's broke or worn out. Um, maintenance. Anything I like and dislike about it. So to start with the mods... We have, as you can see, the Pro Armor front bumper. This is a really nice, solid bumper. They're hard to find. Um, I don't know. If you go to Pro Armor's website, they don't even list them. The only place I found you can get them is on eBay. And um, I don't know if it's like new old stock, like just left over of what they made. And there's just some residuals floating around that they're selling. But you can't find them on their website because Pro Armor's kind of switched. They bought out by Polaris a few years ago, and they just switched everything over to side-by-sides. So, well, also while we're up front, I have the uh, Precision Steering Stabilizer. This is the standard one. It's not the uh, premium or the uh, the high-end one. This is the entry-level one. Still $500. Does great. The only difference is between this and the more expensive one is there's uh, additional... Fluid capacity in higher end ones, so for fade, if you're racing, um, doing, you know, Baja stuff or best in the desert and you're long, long time pounding on it, just holds more fluid for less fade. Um, I haven't found this to fade at all, riding in the dunes for hours on end, no problems. So you take with that what you will, when you, if you're gonna go to purchase one, which one you need. I would say if you're a casual rider, uh, every day, you know, Weekend Warrior, the standard one's fine. If you're gonna race and uh, do 500 mile races with it or stuff like that, and you just want the extra fluid capacity, then pay more, you know, shell out more money for the higher end one. Um, then moving up, we got Pro Taper bars. These are just the standard SE uh, 7 8 bars, so didn't need to change anything on the steering stem. They just bolt right in. And uh, I have the ODI grips on here. These are the lock-on grips. I've had these grips on here since the bars, probably about a year, um, with a lot of usage. And you can see, they're not really that worn. I do wear gloves um, as well. These things are nice. They take a lot of the vibration out. They're super soft grips. I love them. I have them on every single machine I own. Um, up front, also, while we're up front, we'll just get down below, show you. This is the Glan Innovations skid plate. Super thick, super solid. Very similar to the DRW one. You can't go wrong with either one. I just happened to buy this one because I wanted blue. Um, so that's why I went with this one. But either way is probably about the same quality. I've seen the DRW ones up front, up uh, close in person as well. And they're pretty much the same exact quality as the Glans. Uh, it's whatever you like better. If you want to get a colored one, Glan makes something red, blue, black. I think even white. I don't know why you'd get that one, but um, and, that, and that's a nice mod. Protects the whole under underside. Don't have to worry about smashing anything, especially out here in the desert. Um, even if back east, anywhere you ride, you, you come, you're in rocky trails or anything, and you know, it's just peace of mind. So that was a hundred dollar mod, cheap. Um, and then also underneath, I have the Cuervo Racing drain plug reducer. I'll see if I can get it on camera. It's hard to see. But basically, it reduces the size of the drain plug in the bottom of the engine. You'll see. Oh, there you go. So, it comes with two pieces. First piece is this back part right there. You'll put that in and uh, with some red Loctite after you, you know, drain the oil and clean, clean the threads. 
nice and dry. Let that set, and then you can put this small bolt in. This is, I believe, 12 millimeter. It's the same size now as the one up front for your oil tank. So you can use the same socket for both. And the reason for doing that is the standard drain bolt is so big that you'd have to use a 3 8 ratchet. Um, and, you, and you end up putting, when you're putting it back in, you put too much leverage on it and accidentally over torque them and they strip the threads. So this way you can use a quarter inch ratchet and just snug up the drain plug. And um, you don't got to worry about, you know, putting too much leverage on it and cranking the hell out of it and stripping it. So that's that. It's a cheap mod, maybe 15 bucks. Quavo Racing sells them on his online store. At, uh, he has an eBay store. So you can get them there. Um, or you can just contact him directly, set it up. It's just easier to buy it from him on eBay, though. He has an eBay store. And then um, we have the Nerf bars, Alba Racing. I've had these on here since the first week I got the machine, uh, before the first ride. Uh, they've held up well. Only thing you'll see, the uh, it's getting a little pitted. Just where the tires kick up stuff, especially being at the dunes. And out here in the desert, there's a lot of sand. Just get sand blasted, and you'll see it's all kind of pitted up here. Uh, but they're aluminum, so it doesn't rust. Other than that, they've held up well. The nets are still good. Um, I, I set them when I got them, and I have, they haven't stretched. I haven't had to readjust them. So that those are, those are holding up nice. No complaints about that. Um, also did the Alba Racing rear grab bar, factory rear grab bar, super skinny. And... Um, so I changed that out right away too. This is a lot more, it's a lot more strength and rigidity to the subframe. Um, I got it. The factory one was a little twisted, brand new. And my fenders were higher on one side than the other, about a quarter of an inch. And uh, it was just, uh, once I took the factory grab bar off and put this one on, kind of lined, lined it all up. It, it's nice and straight. So um, that's that. Other than that, as far as mods go, uh, Visually speaking, that'll be it. I have the Yoshimar RS2 exhaust. This is the full pipe. It's not just the slip-on. It's the full header and slip and pipe all the way up front. You see, it's nice, uh, nice bluish, nice bluish tint there. It's uh, weathered nice. And um, what's nice about the Yoshi is you can use the factory heat shields on them, uh, both of them, and they, you know, they have little. Welded on tabs that just screws right into, um, where you can get the replacement ones if you want aftermarket style. I haven't had any issues with the exhaust. The exhaust has got about, I want to say, 65, I don't know, 65, 70 hours on it maybe. Um, and I haven't repacked it. Still sounds great. Uh, I haven't had any issues. I'll probably get to like 100 hours and then I'll order a packing kit from them. And you can repack it yourself. They send you the kit, which includes all new rivets, uh, the bands. They, they send you replacement bands for all, all, both sides, uh, all new rivets, and they send you the packing. So you can drill out the rivets, replace the packing, re-rivet it. You just need a rivet gun to do the job. It's not that bad. I have the, it comes, I like the spark arrestor in it for a lot of the riding I do is like state forest. Um, state land and they haven't but they can <laughs> if they're feeling froggy uh, check you for spark arresters there has been on occasion I haven't gotten stopped but where they'll have like a checkpoint you know you're going through and they're checking people for registrations and you know spark arresters and all that stuff so last thing you want is to have an issue getting a ticket you just want to have fun they check you good to go that's it um so I kind of keep it in typically. If you take it out, it's a lot louder. It's a little more mellowed out. And you probably will get a little more performance with it out. I haven't ridden with it out enough uh, other than testing. I have a video with the sound testing if you're interested on the channel. And um, I'll, kinda, I'll leave a link to the end of, at the end of this video for it if you're interested where I compare the uh, exhaust with the tip in and the, and the spark arrestor out. You can hear the difference it's quite a bit louder with it out. Uh, with it in, it's quite a bit quieter. Still loud. Any exhaust is going to be loud on a 700. But if you compare it to when it's out, it's a significant difference in volume. 
Um, I couple that with a PC5. Let me get pop the seat off for you. So I have my PC5 tucked down in here. Cables run and then plugged into its various spots. I have an hour meter on there. I put it on with about 10 hours on the bike. Um, it says 69.6, so that's where I'm about 80 hours on the machine right now. I have a uni filter in here. That's that's it for air air, air intake. Um, I have the air box is stock otherwise. Probably what I'm gonna do is um, get the collar, the billet collar and updated filter. So just, just to increase the volume of flow a little bit and probably retain the cover. Uh, I'm not gonna go with the um, open air box thing. I just, or a cane and filter, I just don't, I just don't trust them uh, for dust levels. A lot of dust here, fine, super fine dust. Um, I know everybody's got their own opinions, but my personal preference is a foam, oiled foam filter for the best filtration. So I, I have the uni in there. My factory filter I had in there for a while. I only put the uni in there about uh, two months ago, maybe. Uh, the factory one, it, I went to wash it one time. I noticed a little rip in the front. So it was starting to get old. So I ordered a uni replacement and uh, that's it. It's the only thing I've done for air intake. So that's, that's it for performance mods, the exhaust, the PC5 and the air intake. So as you can see, the plastics the, are holding up well. Um, it's dirty right now. I don't know how well camera's picking it up, but this has got two dune trips on it since I've washed it. So you can see some sand and stuff in the, in the, um, on top of the skid plate probably earlier in the video. And it's just kind of coated with a little dust. So nothing crazy, just really needs a good rinse. Um, what I do to keep the plastics nice and shiny and clean is I've used various products. I typically like a quick detail spray. I'll show you a couple I use on the plastics to kind of keep them. Uh, if you do happen to go through any mud, which I don't go through much, which is one of the reasons why the machine is still in such good shape, um, it'll rinse off a lot easier, water beads off it. So I use like a quick detail spray with a ceramic in it. And um, so a ceramic quick de a ceramic detail spray. The, anything you use for your car, if you use a detail spray on your car, you can use them on this. Wash the machine, dry it, spray the plastics down with the detail spray um, or a spray wax. Wipe it off just the same way you would do your car. That's how I do it on the plastics. I'll also then take the rag and wipe the A-arms, the bumpers, everything. Um, there's various ones I've used. They all do a really good job. There are some particular, there, there is a, a bottle of stuff I've been, I used recently because I can use it on the seat and because it's good for vinyl. I'll show you that here. This is kind of my detail cabinet. So let me get... So right here is the 303 protectant for interior and exterior. It has UV inhibitors in it, so it's going to help the fading and stuff like that on your plastics. I'll spray the whole plastic down. These aren't really good for painted plastics. If you have the non-painted plastics, like on the Raptor here, this Raptor, um, but if you have an ATV with painted plastics, this is not for paint. This is just for plastic, vinyl, stuff like that. Um, you spray it on, wipe it off. It leaves a very durable coating um i i put like i posted like a minute and a half video i was washing uh the atvs down one day after a full day of riding um in mud and dust and scrubbing it and you can see how well it still beads um with this stuff on it so use something like that you can use something like this here too just a spray wax uh what i'll do sometimes just this is what i was talking about as far as a detail spray with ceramic in it and they, there's all different brands um I have an Adams one with graphene in it. Graphene's a little step up higher than ceramic. So that's what I use. As far as oil, looking at this stuff here, that's what I got. Oh, I got you in the cabinet. The AMS oil, I run the 1040, which is what the manual calls for. Uh, it covers all climates. And I use I just like AMS oil products. I use it in everything. I also have that AMS oil there. I use in the Can AMS, the 550. And then uh, you can get this one where it says the ATV UTV. It's just as good. The dirt, the one that says dirt is formulated for more racing, dirt bikes, um, sport quads. So it's supposed to be a little bit better for the clutch. I've used both. If I can't, can't always get this one and I'll just get the 8, 1040 ATV, just as good. But I like, I like to run AMS oil. Don't use any Yama Lube. Uh, not going to get into details why, but if you search that on 
YouTube, you'll see plenty of reasons why. A lot of clutch failures and stuff like that from the Yama, Yama Lube. So I run Amsoil. I have since since it was new. I've tried um, Motul once on, on recommendation. I couldn't get Amsoil one time, and I, I put some Motul in it. It was good. Um, my opinion was I didn't feel the clutch was as good a feel um, with the Motul. So I, I just went back to the Amsoil. But that's it for that. As far as maintenance goes, I change the oil extremely regularly. Uh, probably way more often than any of you guys here watching the video. Some people would probably say I'm insane. But probably every... Let's see, I, I've had it for two years. Got 80 hours on it. I've changed the oil six times. So, you know, 10... It's averaging, what, 10, 12 hours an oil change? 15 hours at most, I think, is ever, I've ever gone. is like 14 and a half on, a, on an oil change. So, change it regularly. And... Um, she runs good. You know, the only other maintenance I've done on it, nothing has ever broke, failed, knock on wood. <laughs> I say that. Um, but the only thing I've changed on it that's worn out is, and it wasn't really bad, but it's just noisy, is I, I changed the stock chain roller right here. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. I replaced that uh, with a new roller with it's got a more solid bearing. I have a little video put, uh, on my channel on that, so if you can see... The difference between the stock one and the aftermarket one with a better bearing in it. If you're interested, I'm st it's still stock chain and sprockets. They haven't worn out. Um, I ordered new ch a new chain and sprockets. Figuring that's ah, two years old. It's got got a lot of hours. You know, not a lot of hours, but it's got 80 hours almost on it. Probably about due. Um, I had thought looking at it, ah, maybe they're a little worn. But when I got the new sprocket, I ordered OEM sprockets. By the way, uh, this is the factory gearing. I haven't changed that either. So I ordered, since they're wearing so well, I ordered the OEM sprockets. So I got OEM front and rear sprocket. And um, I forget what chain I got. But it's an, it's an X-ring chain. Factory chain on Yamaha Raptor is an X-ring chain, not an O-ring chain. So I ordered another X-ring chain and um, two OEM sprockets. And when I put the OEM sprockets next to the ones that are on there now, there's almost no difference in the teeth size and wear. So they look pretty good still. Let me get a good look there, which is which is pretty amazing for uh, 80 hours on it. It speaks to the quality that, of the material they're using Yamaha. So why go with an aftermarket sprockets when these hold up so well? I just ordered OEM sprockets. So maybe after the end of the season, um, you know, maybe by summer, I'll just change them because I have them and it'll be good for another, you know, 100 hours or so. So the chain I've only adjusted twice. It's got... About an inch of slack right now, which is you should have an inch to an inch and a quarter uh, by factory. And in the, in the manual says that's what sort it of states, inch to inch and a quarter slack. I've only adjusted the chain twice, maybe, since I've had it. It just doesn't stretch much. I will keep it lubed. Um, my, my lube of preference is the Maxima chain wax. I'll put, after, every time I wash it, I'll use the Maxima chain cleaner, give it a good scrub. Hose it all off, get it nice and clean and stripped. I'll put a coating of the chain wax on there. And then sometimes in between rides, I'll just put a little bit of the regular Maxima chain lube, the crystal clear one, um, just kind of keep it lubed up. And the chain wax is nice because it seals everything up. It's like a paraffin wax that dries and encapsulates the seals and all that stuff. So it doesn't allow water and dirt and all that stuff into, into the, uh, between the in between the X-rings. And it keeps the seals good, and that's probably one of the reasons why, you know, it hasn't stretched that much. Um, that and, you know, it's factory power. I'm not, it's not hot rotted out. So that's probably another reason why. So that is really it as far as maintenance goes. I'll say as far as my likes about it, uh, the torque is awesome. I love the torque on these on this machine, and that's one of, and the way it, the way you can drive it um, in almost any gear. And it's just, you just can't stall it. And what I mean by that is, and that's one of the reasons I fact, I've kept the factory gearing because I just enjoy the way it is now. I don't, I don't feel like I need anything different in the gearing. Um, when I, when I ride this machine, a lot of the hours are in the dunes. A lot of, a lot of these hours have, have been in the dunes. So I can pretty much cruise in third gear the whole time 
downshift to second once in a while when I need to, but I could be in third gear and you can hear the, the motor probably be right to downshift, but just be lazy, being lazy and not downshifting. And the torque of this thing and the way, the way these motors are, you just get into the throttle and it just pulls right up and you don't even need to downshift. It's just, that, that's one, that's my favorite thing about it. And that's why I went with a Raptor 700 over a YFZ 450 when I was making that decision when I bought this. Uh, Cause those, you know, those are, I wanted a new one and those are the only two new machines they make. And that's what went into my decision making uh, with buying this machine. I've spoke about it on other videos, but so I won't get into depth, but that's the reason why. And you just, it's less maintenance, um, even though I changed the oil more than you're supposed to anyway. So that really wouldn't have made a difference for me. But top end rebuilds, you need more on, on a 450 because they always have to be revved out. You can just be lug, lugging this thing. It's perfectly happy just putting around on a trail or ripping full throttle. You know, it's however you want to ride it, this thing will do it. Um, the other thing I love about it is the looks. It's a very aggressive looking machine. I love the color. I wanted blue, Team Yamaha blue. This is what I wanted. Um, and so I, I love that. That's one of the reasons I haven't put a graphics kit on it because I just love the blue. I'll probably do a little bit of customizing on it just to kind of make it a little bit more my own. I'm going to get a uh, full works or a similar style seat cover for it and, you know, have like Odyssey off-road or something in the back of the seat um, and just do like a blue and black and, and gray or a blue and black seat cover. And... Not going to do, probably not going to do a graphics kit. So I love the machine. Uh, I The only thing I would say is it's a negative. So if I had to pick out a negative, this is kind of really being nitpicky just to kind of be fair. Um, the motors on these things are extremely noisy, like marbles in a can. It's it's just the way they are. I'm... I get paranoid all the time on my stuff. I hear the slightest noise with anything, my, anything, my, my quads, my, my, my vehicles. If I hear a noise, I'm like tearing the thing apart, trying to find it. So you have to just accept that with these. The motors are extremely noisy. Even it now, after like having it and riding it for 80 hours, every time I get on it, I, f I find myself like sticking my ear by the motor and listening and like, is that a new sound? Or it, They're just noisy. They run noisy. The, the bottom end sound a little marbly. There's, there's, there's ticking in the top end. They just, it's just the way they are. So if you get one and yours sounds like that, don't freak out. They all do. Uh, so that's, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, oh, that, and that reminds me, the noisy of the engine, the only, that's the only other thing I did to this is I checked the valve clearance at 70 hours. I have a video on that as well. You can check out if you're interested. I'll get, that gets into more detail. But I, I checked the valve clearance at 70 hours and it was still within spec. Um, I loosened them up a little bit more to the, the higher end, so I don't have to worry about checking them again for a long time. And um, set them and forget them. I mean, I probably could have left it and gone another 80 hours, and they still would have been, would have been in, within spec because I only checked them just because, you know. I just figured it's 70 hours on it. Let me just check. Um, and they were still within spec. So they were, like, right in the middle of the range, so... <laughs> Uh, that's probably a testament to always having clean air and the amount of times I change the oil and using a good quality oil. It's stuff's going to wear out less. Your valves are going to wear out if you have dirty air coming in and dirty oil in the engine. So keep your oil clean, keep your air clean, and these motors should last a long, long time. Um, so that's about it for this. As far as future mods, we'll have to repack the exhaust at some point. It's not really a mod. I may flirt with the idea of trying a different exhaust. I love the Yoshimura. Um, and again, I have a video on that with comparing the sounds with the tip in and out. And I talk about how much I like it and the quality of it fit and finish. But just to try something new, you know, there's a lot of good exhaust on the market. Um, maybe I'll give another one a shot, like a Rossier or something like that. Downside of some of these other ones is they don't come with spark arresters. I really need a spark arrestor for the areas I ride in. Uh, I don't want to have any issues, so I want to have, and I don't want to have to retrofit something, you know, finagle a spark arrestor in there. It's, the exhaust system comes with it. You can take it in, put it out. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's why I went with them. Uh, HMF also gives you a spark arrestor. 
Um, I'm assuming if I talk to Ross here, they probably can do something and include a spark arrestor with the pipe if I wanted it. We'll see. I may flirt with getting an R5 from them. Um, may, I'm in, I'm in uh, Tucson, Arizona area, in case any of you don't know. So I would like at some point to actually take the bike to a performance shop and get a dyno tuned. I don't really know of anyone I trust to do that in my area. If any of you know, leave a comment below. I'd love to love to give, uh, you know, chat with them and see, um, just get it really tuned. I'm running a map from DinoJet on my PC5 and it's been good, no complaints. Um, I, the, the bike runs mint, so, but I'm sure there's a little couple more ponies in there I can get out of it with a true dyno tune. So I would like to do that. I just don't know anybody in my area to do it. And um, other than that, man, yeah, that's it guys. The suspension settings. Pretty close to stock, I have them. Um, I had them a little softer up front. I was kind of playing around, riding around with that for a while. But I felt like it rolled a little bit more in the corners. So I kind of bumped it, you know, more back up to stock. Um, I have the high-speed compression set maybe a quarter turn, quarter turn softer than stock. And then I have the slow speed right at about stock. The rebound, I slowed it down just a tad um, in the rear, just to eliminate any uh, bucking over some big whoops. And she eats the whoops pretty good. I gotta say, for a Raptor, everybody says, you know, the Raptors can't, but you can pound the hell out of this thing over some decent sized whoops and she, she eats them up. So I'm happy with that. We'll probably, at some point, uh, I keep talking about it, but I just never do it, is get the shocks off, send them out, get them revalved, and resprung. Um, they say that makes a world of difference. I don't know necessarily I'll go wider on the machine. I know people do that. If I wanted it really wide, I would have just gotten a wide Z450. I know it handles way better if you widen it. And then you kind of got the best of both worlds. You got that Raptor power plant and the handling of, you know, closer to a 450. So maybe we'll do that. I don't know. If I did, it'd probably be like some Hauser A-arm setup um, and then get the shocks done. And I don't, and then, you know, a wider rear axle on the back. So you, typically the setup people are running when they widen them. So maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm not in a big rush to do that. I like the way it is right now. Um, she works for me everywhere I ride it. Like I said, there's a lot of doing hours on this machine. Um, way more than, you know, desert and trail hours on it so i don't know if you consider them hard hours uh, but it definitely doesn't beat up the chassis as much because you're not hitting stumps and rocks and all that stuff it's just sand um you know you hit some big g out sometimes but and the motor has to work to climb some big ones so that's really the it does i don't beat the hell out of the machine um on a consistent basis, I, was, I should say. I, I, I'll beat on it. I'll get on it from time to time. But I'm not, you know, thumb mashed all the way in uh, the whole time I'm on the bike because no motor is going to last if you ride it like that. So it's, you know, I'm on it and I'm off it. So it doesn't, it's not taking a beating. I'm very conscious of taking care of the machine and I want it to last without having to get into the motor. And so far, so good. It's been pretty good. Like I said, the valves weren't even out of adjustment when I checked them at 70 hours. So I would say solid purchase. I love it. Uh, probably not going to get rid of it. Well, at this point, I'm definitely not getting rid of it. Um, but who, who the hell knows? I'm, I'm going to be 46 in, in April. And uh, I'm going to ride this thing as long as I can, as long as my body will allow me to. So I have some back issues and neck issues that I deal with. But, you know, it's just a product of getting older but i love the spore quads um i don't want to get, ever not ride one if i can if i can be like uh mike from um atv world um the dad on that channel god bless that man he rides his raptor with his son and uh and he rips that thing and if i can do that like those guys <laughs> Uh, that's that's the plan never to never be able, never have to get off this machine if i gotta ride it slower i will but you know i don't i don't want to have to give up the sport quad game I've, I've been in love with sport quad since i was a kid 
And, uh, you know, since I was 13, 14 years old when I had my first one, and I have no plans anytime soon of not riding sport quads. So right to mix it up, have, have two machines, which I do. We'll do, we'll do a video on that kind of in the future about what's the best combo in my opinion to have in your garage. But uh, that's it for this one. You'll see she's in dune mode still. She's got the, uh, she got the paddles, scat track haulers. And I also have another set of paddles up there, the ITP sand stars. And then those are my dirt tires for uh, desert and everywhere else. Those are the GBCXC Masters, same as in the front. So I, I do plan on paint, get, paint, painting these wheels or finishing them off in black, getting them powder coated or, or uh, painting them. This is what matches the front. Um, I just throw them on there like this, but I would like to get them black, blacked out. Probably do that here. It might be a little nice little project over the summer when I'm not using the paddles. And I'm just using the knobbies and they're off the machine. So I've had two... Uh, doing trips on this in the past month. Uh, I got another one coming up in two weeks with um, Ian from Square One Speed. We're going to the 250R meetup in Glamis, President's Day weekend. So if you guys are out there, say hi. And uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope this is informative for you. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a Raptor and you're worried about longevity or what to expect, I hope this was as informative as possible for you. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment below. Love to hear from you. Smash that like button on your way out and follow us on Instagram as well. Odyssey underscore off-road over on Instagram. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate those of you who are subscribed and stuck around this long. And uh, still continue to watch the videos. Much appreciated if you're not subscribed and you clicked on this video for the Raptor. I got a ton of Raptor content on the channel and there'll be plenty more to come. So smash that subscribe button. We'll see you guys out in the next one. Get out there and ride safe. We'll talk to you later.